Hello and welcome to the South Pacific Alliance podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. And before we get started, a very special thank you to those of our churches that give to our district fair share that make this podcast possible, where we don't need a sponsor like BetterHelp or Quip or HelloFresh or whatever. It's just you churches being amazing and awesome and supporting the ministries and initiatives of the district, including What's happening right now, if you're watching on video, you might see a beautiful uh, wood fireplace uh, behind me and my guests uh, because we are live at winter camp, uh, which is also only possible thanks to our district fair share giving. Um, So thank you so much uh, for participating in uh, the ministries of your Alliance family. Uh, I'm so excited for today's podcast. And uh, before I introduce our guests, uh, our today's topic is about worship what it means to be a worshiper, a worship leader, Um, what's the difference between our performance and worship. Uh, And I'm so excited for our guests um, that are part of of a band from our Bakersfield area churches called All Things New. I'm ripping their their merch. If you are uh, watching live again on video, you can see me um, in my nice hoodie that they got for me. (laughs) But I'm sitting here with Fernando, Gabby, and Christina. Hello, how's it going? Good, good. Good, amazing. Thank you so much for taking your time out of today to sit with me and have this conversation. Um, Why don't we just go down the line, introduce yourself, share a little bit about um, your history and ministry and um, what drew you to worship ministry. Hi everyone, my name is Fernando Hernandez and I'm currently the music director at Nova Creson Church here in Bakersfield, California. I began my ministry at the age of 15 and currently I just love uh, being able to be part of uh, being able to do worship more than anything and taking on this role has just opened lots of doors to be able to worship with lots of people around the area and outside of the area as well. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gabby. Um, I'm the worship leader at Nova Cation Church. Um, I've been in ministry, I think, for about three years now, which is kind of crazy to, to think about. Um, my testimony of how I came to a worship leader is a whole other story. I don't know. We can talk about that later. We can talk about it now. Um, I mean, this is the podcast. We take all the time Uh, we need to talk about whatever we need to. How I became a worship leader. Get the mic straight in front of you. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Settle in, everyone. Taking it back, I actually never thought that I would have been doing this. Um, And it's crazy how the Alliance has, one, impacted my life because it was at life camp back when I was 18, 17 years old when I first went. And um i never thought i'd be called to ministry i know my parents have been in ministry for a long time so i was born and raised in the church but i always told myself this is not for me i do not (laughs) want to do it um i always considered myself even the youth as a as a as a youth back in church i was the quiet one or i was the one who just wanted to stay in the shadows and not um not be expressive or whatsoever but then uh life uh 2019 came about and I had my experience with the the presence of the Holy Spirit for the first Mm -hmm. time. And I remember it was towards the end of the week. And um, as I was seeing the worship uh, team just leading and the way they how expressive they were in worship and how they just proclaimed like the good news through song, it just brought something special to me. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I had this voice in the back of my head. Now I know it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me, but he said, that, that's what you're called to do. That's Amen. what you're supposed to do. Amen. And so, I mean, I came back from life and I, I told my parents, I said, you know what? I think I'm ready. I, mm. And it was a big shock for them. They're like, what, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I even think that COVID, COVID was kind of a blessing for me because if it wasn't for COVID, I would have not been here. Yeah. Um, I, we had lost our worship leader at the time at Nueva. And uh, my dad said, you know what? it's time to step up. And I'm like, I'm only 19. How can I lead a whole congregation? I can't do this. So, um, I always see I see myself now and I'm like, you're never too young to be able to worship and go crazy for God. So I love what I do and I'm so glad to be able to be a part of the CMA Alliance and leading other kids into youth. Amen. Amen. Last but not least, Christina. I'm Christina. I'm from the Oaks community church. I am the director of worship and youth over Mm -hmm. there. Um, I've been doing worship since high school. Wow. That's when I started. Um, I remember it was two counselors, or not counselors, I guess youth leaders. Yeah. Um, they played guitar and they wanted to start a youth band. And so this is going to sound really bad, but they told me that 
They didn't tell me. They suggested that somebody else be the worship leader because <laughs> they played an instrument and could lead the band. Uh -huh. And I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was going to learn how to play guitar oh, wow. because I knew that I was called to worship. Yeah. So I did. Mm -hmm. I learned how to play guitar. Out of yeah. Spite. Mm -hmm. Kind of. But yeah, God's kinda. using that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, but no, I really, since I started in a youth band, I really believe that it's important to equip the next generation. So yeah. like my role at the Oaks yeah. is worship and youth. Yeah. And I use our youth for everything. Um, <laughs> there are sounds, there yeah. are tech, we have them in our worship team. So it's just nice to see the circle just keep going back. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. where my heart is. Amen. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Well, let's, let's uh, start with this question. You've probably thought of this question before, but how would you define worship? Obviously, you guys are worship leaders through song and praise. Um, so for you, where's your heart? How would you define worship? For, for me, I define worship as, a, as an intimate moment where it's really just me and God. Mm. One, that's where I fell in love with the Holy Spirit and worship. So anytime I, I could say I'd be having a really hard day or... Um, Things are not going correctly. But the moment I step on that altar and I really kind of give it up onto God through song is just something so beautiful mm -hmm. to me. And so I view worship as a form of connection and a form of intimacy with Christ in Amen. a way that's not expressible here. But yeah. Amen. I agree with Gabby in that and just being expressive with it. I always joke that... <laughs> we have it easy as worship leaders. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at other people who have a heart for evangelism, honestly, that kind of scares me to go mm -hmm. out on the street and just start <laughs> talking about Jesus. Yeah. So I feel like as a worship leader, I just get to go up and worship and help usher the presence of the Lord in, and yeah. he takes care of the rest. So I'm mm -hmm. like, whoo, yeah. thank you, God. <clears throat> so worship is very intimate, and it's individual. Mm -hmm. Awesome. For me, worship is honestly the ultimate expression of gratitude and how much God is really worth to someone. Um, it's the way of being able to communicate to God through our spirits as well. And ultimately also experiencing the presence of God more than anything, mm -hmm. obviously through prayer, but through worship is just something so beautiful that there are miraculous things that happen during worship, you know. So to me, it's just an ultimate, you know, act of gratitude. Or yeah. anything towards God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I love that it covers so many different areas. Like some people could be super joyful through worship. Some people are, are experiencing heartache and healing mm -hmm. and letting the Lord work. So it's not just, it's not like one set. It's not like different compartments. Like everybody can partake in that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think worship is anything we do to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And then that can be through service, that can be through evangelism. Um, but there is something special. And the topic of conversation today is worship yeah. through song, mm -hmm. uh, worship through praise. Um, so as you, as you guys have had some experience leading worship and in lots of different worship settings, um, why do you think uh, worship through praise brings about the presence of the Holy Spirit so easily? Well, I believe that as we're proclaiming the name of God more than anything, you're making a heavenly declaration towards heaven. Mm -hmm. And as it reaches the Father's throne room, that's, you know, it, it brings like that, that vessel where, you know, that the presence of God could come down from heaven down to earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I would say being able to rejoice, um, and song with the congregation and a and a church is just how it is. We're we're literally recreating heaven mm -hmm. down below. Yeah. So I mean, we were created to worship and to sing. I mean, it even says in the word that we must thank God and we sing praises even in our highs and our lows. Mm -hmm. So being able to recreate that presence of we're just gonna worship forever and in turn in in eternity in heaven. So being able to do that here and glorify him with song and praises and joyous people shouting. And that's why when I'm on the altar, I'm like, I just want to go crazy. Yeah. I want to, I always get told, I'm like, there's not, uh, there's not enough room for Gabby to run around. And, <laughs> and I'm like, when I'm up there, I'm like, it's me and you, God. Yeah. It's me and you. I want to sing to the highest of highs that I can for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I just love praise when we all come together. Like there's so many stories in the Bible where numbers have power. Mm -hmm. And so when we come together and we're worshiping for one 
goal. We're yeah. united and yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. Amen. Uh, are there any verses or passages or stories in scripture that really inspire you in your worship oh. and how you lead? <laughs> oh, I got a good, good question. Oh. Here it comes. So one of the biggest things that got me into worshiping in secret, but also bringing it out in public was the story of King David. Mm. Just being able to worship God, you know, completely, I mean, per se, naked, right? <laughs> and just didn't care, didn't care if anybody was to see him, right? He just praised God. And yeah. that was his main goal. To me, that to this day has to be the most inspiring. That and Moses laying down face first, yeah, you know, to praise God and, you know, just to worship him more than anything. I have to hop, like piggyback on um, the story of King David more. For me, it was how young. Yeah. he was yeah and that he had so much power being young i mean like i said earlier one of my my scariest things to face was that how am i going to lead a congregation at 19. yeah one i'm like can they trust me can people in my team really see me as their worship leader mm -hmm. can they really you know submit to an authority of hey we're going to do this this and that because in reality they're they're all older than me mm -hmm. and he can easily say I don't have to listen to you. You're still a kid. Mm -hmm. And so I relate to a lot of that where any, any, it doesn't matter how many, how old you are, how young you are. If God wants to use you, he will. Yeah. Amen. If you, if you're willing to be used, if you're willing to if be you're used. willing to obey mm -hmm. and, and follow through. And I love the story of David, um, you know, and that story, the ark comes back. It's yeah. home. Mm -hmm. The presence of God is with them. Mm -hmm. What else is, what else to do, but to rejoice. Yeah. And so, um, that's a wonderful example, but, um, the Bible tells us David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. Um, and so I, I love to to hear that you guys are following that too. Of like, we, we want to be used by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that has led to some wonderful um, expressions of worship through you and your team yeah. and um, allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you guys uh, because of your willingness mm -hmm. in that sense, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, Christina, any verses or stories? Yeah, so I always think of, um, I'm always reminded whenever we do the song Raise a Hallelujah or yeah. hear it, where it says my weapon is a melody. Mm -hmm. I always go back to when they were um, in any battle or when they had to walk around the wall seven times, yeah. like it was led by trumpet and horn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, we we just have to worship and praise and God's <laughs> going to be victorious. Like yeah. he's not asking us to yeah. do a lot, like just praise him mm -hmm. and Amen. he's going to lead the battle. Amen. Let's talk a little bit practical. Um, you, both of you lead your congregations in worship. Um, what's it like for you guys? What do you do throughout the week? I mean, <laughs> some people in, in the pews or yeah. it might just think, oh, well, they just stand up there and mm -hmm. sing and, and they did it, you know, yeah. but I know that there's a lot more that happens behind yeah. the scenes. Let's share with the world a little bit more about what you do. I always get nervous when... Um people ask to come to practice <laughs> when they come to practice the first thing i tell them is we do not have it together yet yeah. it'll be there by sunday yeah. but we're still working on it and they're like okay okay like they're very gracious mm -hmm. but i mean did, were you gonna say something no go for it okay um for me at the oaks it i do like to know where our senior pastor is going in the message i don't mm -hmm. try i'll never try to make every song pinpoint what he's doing because then I feel like I'm quenching the Holy Spirit and right. what God's going to do. Right. But I do try to read through it and see if there's any themes throughout sure. the scripture that's known. And I'll try to do like one or two songs for a theme that I see. It might not necessarily be what he's going to talk about, yeah. but I want to leave room for God to do what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, that's big, knowing where we're going. And then even just spending time in prayer for the songs and we have, we're fortunate enough to have quite a few people, especially vocalists. So depending on who is going to be there that week, I like to try to think of songs that are also going to minister to them and like how I can use them in some upcoming stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, at Nueva, it's just, it's just me and uh, <laughs> I'm the vocalist there. Um, um, so throughout the week, I'm ministry is full time for me, but I'm also a full time student. Yeah. So um, I'm in school half of. I mean, I'm school all week. And but the way I prepare myself um, with worship is, one, I'm always looking for new songs daily. Mm -hmm. um, when I, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I'm tuning into YouTube and looking at different ways, um, different worship teams are worshiping. What's the new? What are they bringing in? What can I implement into my church? Is there a new song in English that maybe I can translate in Spanish yeah. and uh, bring that there? And so practicality, I kind of, I, 
I can say I'm blessed because if um, I want to do a song, I just throw it at my worship team and I say, we're doing the song, <laughs> get it together by, uh, get it together yeah. by Saturday morning, yeah. we're doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I can say my musicians are, are great. They mm -hmm. will literally get any song down that I throw at them. And um, so I have all the set lists sent out by Monday. Um, I say, prepare your guys' heart, get it done. We're gonna practice Saturday morning and that's that's pretty much practicality of the behind the scenes, but it does put a lot of work, a lot of um, a lot of time and effort. But one thing that I did learn was that a lot of worship leaders put too much trust in their worship set list. Mm -hmm. They can come and say, "I have you know the newest of songs and um, the top it's gonna hits. the top hits. It's gonna be sure. great." Yeah. But when we start doing that, we begin to idolize our worship set and we're not leaving room for the Holy Spirit yeah. to actually speak through those songs. Yeah. So I've learned that it doesn't matter what song you sing. If the Holy Spirit is there, he is going to move the people's hearts Amen. in any way. Amen. So that's one of the things that I... Absolutely. Um, as far as preparing, at least for me per se, because I'm also a full-time student and also working full-time, for sure, for sure, for at least for me, it has to be discipline more yeah. than anything. Um, right here to my left, you have two wonderful worship leaders, but as a perspective from a worship musician on the team, there is, you know, uh, different things that kind of go out throughout the week. So, for example, since I play drums, I tend to look at a lot of drum covers. I tend to look at more like the musical sense and, you know, to send it out to my team. I know at least with us, we try to always work on like some mashups too. Oh, yeah. Kind of bring in the little bit of the thing, old yeah. and the new and that takes kind of some time but ultimately for sure it's always just prayer preparing mm -hmm. yeah. because if we're not preparing the atmosphere you know in secret as the word of god is saying you know you know worship in secret so that you may be praised in public you know um mm -hmm. it, it's really important for musicians for leaders to always constantly stay in prayer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it goes a long way and also more than anything also devotional mm -hmm. because that communication with god is there and, you know, us, you know, as the vessels that God is going to use, we have to be prepared in spirit and in truth yeah. in order for us to come uh, Sunday service where it won't feel like it's a repeated thing. But mm -hmm. it's more like you you know that God is going to move and God is going to do something. So you're preparing yourself spiritually for that. And in reality, worship is such an essential when it comes to the church. Yeah, You're literally preparing the, the plate for the pastor to come in. And I mean... The congregations already opened up their heart. They've received that worship. Now they can really be in tune. Okay, what is God going to speak to me today? Yeah. Um, Another blessing to the practical side during the week mm -hmm. is also the team members. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I realize how much, it's going to sound weird when I say it, but like mm -hmm. how much time I would get to spend with them throughout the week too, individually. Sure. I kind of like forgot about that mm -hmm. when I'm, because um, I recently came into full-time ministry at the Oaks uh, in 2020. So I'm there full-time now, so it's a little bit different. Whereas before I was like them working full-time and trying to do ministry on top of it. And so now I actually get time to like breathe into yeah. them scripture yeah. and spend time with them. And that's yes. a huge blessing because we can all have chaotic weeks and then we mm -hmm. come together on a Sunday morning. And I always look back and I'm like, you never would have known that, you know, we all had something hit the fan this week, but we right. really were able to bring it together in prayer and worship yeah. before our mm -hmm. King. Amen. I think that's uh, so essential. I think you hit on the head that worship is this uh, beginning to opening our hearts to yeah. receive the truth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, worship in community is something special because we are all, it's already said, you know, focused on one thing, Jesus, and preparing uh, to hear from his word. Um, so talk with me about that process. Like, what do you guys do to, because obviously we can't, you know, it's not like uh, the Holy Spirit's like a dog that we've trained to like yeah. uh, He's his own person and he wants to meet us. But how do you guys help prepare the way for the Holy Spirit to enter the presence of the service? Um, at least for me, before every every Sunday morning, um, like I said, I, I have my own time of worship. Mm -hmm. So I'll wake up earlier. Um, I'll go into prayer. I'll read my word. I'll put on worship music and I prepare my own heart mm -hmm. because I know there's a time when you get up there as a worship leader. And Christine, I know you felt this before mm -hmm. where you've prepared your heart. You've prepared the set list and you know that something can happen. Chains will be broken in that moment. Mm -hmm. 
But then you step up on that altar and your congregation is looking at you like, what are you doing? With silence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even with the, with crossed arms. Yeah. And if I always tell myself, if I hadn't prepared my heart before seeing this, yeah, I would have been devastated and, I would have cried out, Lord, what are you doing? Why am I here? What am I? You call me. You called me to be a worship leader, but I can't lead your congregation into worship. Mm -hmm. But then I remember what, and I even saw see it here with the youth. If I, if I have my own moment with the Lord and I say, Lord, I'm not worshiping for a congregation. I'm worshiping for you, mm -hmm. and I have this one on one with Him. Mm -hmm. Then I know the Spirit is going to move through them. Yeah. So it's like it has to start here yeah. in order Absolutely. for it to go there. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I mean everyone in your congregation is coming with their whole week. Exactly. With them. To exactly. That and that's what you have to remember. It. There can be huge barriers to those worship to helping them let go of mm -hmm. what's on their mind, on their heart. Um, sometimes there's really heavy stuff that people are walking into church with. Um, yeah. that's huge. Another thing I do say is um, before I go up on that altar. I pray to myself and I say, Lord, humble my heart Yeah. Um, that I may not be just singing songs, but that I am actually listening to the words of the song and proclaiming yeah. it to you Amen. so that I may be used as your vessel. That's why even in worship, sometimes we can go through a whole worship set list and we're just singing the songs. We're just yeah. getting through the songs. Yeah. But I really believe that there needs to be that time where you come in and mm -hmm. minister what's on your heart or mm -hmm. what the Lord is telling you to minister mm -hmm. to them. Because just like how you said earlier, these people come in with maybe tons of things that's happened throughout mm -hmm. the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's that moment where, okay, the mute, they're hearing the music, they're, they're trying to be there. But the, as soon as you start ministering, mm -hmm. what the Lord has put in your heart, that's when, okay, whoa. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I feel that now. Amen. One thing I encourage above all uh, worship leaders or anyone that is watching the podcast, um, one thing that I loved when Bethel would do would be the story behind the song mm -hmm. sure. and the verses that are attached to it. You know, if you dig deeper, if there's a worship song that you love and you're like, OK, well, I really, really like this song and you dig deep into scripture, you realize how powerful these verses that you are singing and these choruses that you're singing because there are declarations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So above all, you know, really dig deeper into that because I can really elevate the worship experience yeah. above everything. Yeah, amen. Um, I feel like it's a balancing act sometimes in preparation for a Sunday morning because you have the practicality of like the things that need to get done, but then you also <laughs> need to set that time oh, aside yeah. to like realign with the Lord. So, yeah. you know, for me, a Sunday morning starts really early in the morning. And as I get dressed, like I actually play the yeah. set list on repeat just so I can like absorb the songs. And I really pray and ask God to like speak to me about these songs or sometimes I feel like I'll impress something on my heart mm -hmm. and I'll actually reach out to my team this morning and I'll be like hey guys this morning I was listening to this song and I really felt like God said this so I want us to be praying for that yeah. as we come in um but then you got the practicality I'll walk into church and I'll be like oh I gotta get this done and this yeah. done this done and it's kind of like I lose all of that sometimes yeah. Yeah. yeah and so I actually went to and this is just real like I went to my staff about two months ago and yeah. I said hey guys it's too much like when I come in on a Sunday morning, I need to not be distracted by this because when I come up to worship, it's not fair to the congregation. I'm not yeah. giving them my heart yeah. because I had this um, mentality of like the first song is the throwaway song. Yeah, It's just mm -hmm. I'm going to get everything focused. And by the time we get to the second song, now I'm ready. Yeah. And I felt convicted of that. Like it shouldn't be the throwaway song. Yeah. Yeah. Like every song that we should do is exactly. straight into mm -hmm. the spirit with the Lord. So. Right. It's a balance of practicality and actually yes. spending time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I, and with the congregation, too, I do like to be sensitive to what it is that they're feeling as well. I'm not saying we're going to hit the mark every time. Mm -hmm. And it's not about that. Like, we are in charge of ushering in the presence and then letting God take over. Yeah. yeah. So there's sometimes when we're doing a song and I might be really feeling it. And then I'll kind of like open my eyes and the congregation is just not. I'm that. like, okay, I'm God. <laughs> <sighs> this isn't about me right now. Like this is about your church. Yeah. So what direction do we need to go? And I'll just have like a prayer in my mind Amen. between me and God. And we're yeah. kind of like wrestling with it. And then as soon as I just like break, I'm like, okay, God, you do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Obviously the next song will come on and the whole church is there. And I'm like, really this song? Like <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is the one yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. to hear? Okay. I had that. Yeah. But it's just a blessing when that happens. Yeah. Good, good. Talk to me a little bit more about the aspect of prayer 
and preparation and even in the process of performance what 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 role does prayer play in this in in this whole job and process there's never going to be enough prayer yeah. Yeah. in this job and this sustains you so yeah, yeah. never enough <laughs> yeah because one i this is maybe personally how i feel um i don't know if you feel this as a worship leader but um leading worship could really drain yeah. you spiritually oh, absolutely there's been moments where we have a great you know service or a worship night and the, the presence of god moved and it's that next morning where you you begin to feel this this somberness or the enemy tries to do something in order to uh remove that joy so i always look back if i'm not in prayer consistently mm -hmm. and if i'm not pouring out my heart to god consistently mm -hmm. it, the enemy will turn you and yeah. and make you face the other way and easily say, you're not cut out for this. Yeah. Yes. I always say I wish I would have caught the concept of prayer earlier mm. in life, um, mm -hmm. especially as a teenager. If you prayed for like two minutes, I was like, ugh, what are these people <laughs> going to stop? <laughs> yeah. um, but now I just, I can't. I feel like I can't breathe if I don't pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially in worship. I mean, there's people who want to worship and there's people who are called to worship. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you're called to worship, you really need to protect that. Mm -hmm. So like I totally yes. feel that where the enemy tries to come in and still kill and destroy yeah. and just take away from what God has given. Yeah. I always see prayer too as like, if you can't pour out your heart in prayer, how can you pour out your heart in worship? Mm -hmm. They go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. yep. yes. Amen. Absolutely. How can you, whatever you do in secret, is going to show up on that altar. Yeah. So it's like, mm -hmm. how can you pour out your heart and sing these songs to be mm -hmm. able to grasp that congregation and really allow them to feel what you feel? Because yeah. that's how it all starts. Yeah. I mean, you need them to see what the Lord has done in you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what the testimony is. You don't yes. need to know everything. You don't need to know, yes, is it great to know um, the Bible uh, scriptures in and out? Yes, that's awesome. That's for our own knowledge and our own personal walk with Christ. But to share the good news, you just need to see your testimony. Yeah. Amen. And Amen. if you see that testimony through worship, and I always try to allow the congregation to feel that worship was my game changer. It was my life changer. That's what yes. I, that's, that's my cup of tea. And if I can give that to you, great. Cause then you mm -hmm. can see the love of Christ in me through you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that comes with prayer because if I wasn't able to go on my knees and surrender myself and say, Lord, I give it all to you. Yeah. I can't do the same thing in worship. None. There have been times in my, I'm a lot older than these guys. I know you, you know wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. These are like you my children. You over 20. Thank you. Um, but there have been times in my life with worship where I, just being honest, I find myself identifying as a worship leader and not as a child of God. Mm -hmm. And so those have been huge pivotal moments for me because I have found myself saying, okay, God, I think I need to put down my guitar because this something's not right in my yeah. spirit. And so I've been able to do that. Like I've been able to set the guitar aside and I've left worship for a year at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I think I just needed to grow more spiritually yeah. mature mm -hmm. more and then learn the aspect of prayer and the importance of it because I don't yeah. want to identify as a worship leader. I want to identify as someone who follows Christ. Yeah, so I mean, the testimony is huge. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, being a worship leader, I mean, being any leader in ministry puts a target on your back. Oh, and yeah. We've already talked about, oh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. start talking a little bit about the aspects of spiritual warfare that you might face. But um, I want to dive into that a little bit more, um, but preface it by saying that, you know, worship and leading in worship, I think you, you, you're you opening your heart and your passion uh, mm -hmm. to the world and to everyone, to the enemy. And mm -hmm. so what is it like to kind of deal with the spiritual warfare um, that you might face? And um, how is it unique in some ways to being a worship leader? So there's like, I feel like there's super big spiritual warfare. And then there's yeah. like little ones that just... Yeah. I just want to throw you off. Yeah, like, like when, you know, someone will come up to the stage and be like, the drums are too loud. And I'm oh, just like, yeah. Okay, but did you see, okay. did you meet yeah, God I during the worship? Like, was it there? <laughs> <laughs> or for for some. Gotta play with I <laughs> but um, I feel like those are kind of like just the little darts that the yes. enemy just yeah. starts throwing yep. to where you're like, okay. And then you kind of get distracted by how do I fix this, this, and this, and you have to stop and you're yes. like, wait, God, that's not important. Like, you're important. So that's like, where the spiritual warfare starts for me. And then it just increases from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
yeah, uh, we deal with a lot of the little spiritual warfares here. And they're um, something small for us. is More for me is that um, I begin to, since I'm not, I mean, our church is a Spanish church. Yeah. And I'm not very fluent in Spanish, but I can sing in Spanish. I'll, I'll sing yeah, all day yeah. in Spanish. <laughs> and so when I'm trying to minister to these people in Spanish, I'm like, Lord, Jesus, help me find some <laughs> words in order to. And so this, like the little things is a um, couple like of the. The hermanos at church, they're they're like, you you sing great in Spanish, but you need to work on uh, your actual yes. Spanish. And so it's like, did you not hear anything else that I, yeah. I'm sorry, but you know, songs are great, right? Um, but then when it comes to the big, big spiritual warfare, um, I still wrestle with uh, the, I'm a very open book, yeah. but I still wrestle with the, the feeling of anxiety and um, maybe feeling that this isn't my calling mm. or um that maybe i'm not cut out for this because i may not have the the sweet sweet spirit that someone is supposed to you know carry as a worship leader or have that um ability to be engaging to everyone around you and bring in that knit community and i mean that's the way i feel but other people can say whatever <laughs> they want well, yeah. those are just so, lies from the enemy yeah. i mean i mean i feel the same way like I get this thought of like someone else can come in and do this yeah. so much better than me. Yes. Like, yeah. Lord, where are they? But then I'm just reminded like, God, you have me in this place right here, right now, because you've called me to this place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to do worship here, great. If I'm going to do it somewhere else, great. If you call someone to come take over my place, it's because you're moving me somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, just the lies from the enemy that start to creep yeah. in. If you're not being prayerful and you're not reading mm -hmm. your word, you're going to quickly fall into those traps. Oh, yes. Or like I had mentioned before, when something very big and spiritual happens where the presence is there, I'm not kidding you. It, it never fails that the next day I am in this slumber of like, either you feel so drained that you don't, you don't want to step out. Like you're yeah. like, okay, I want to break for now. Yeah. Or um, you feel that either everyone is attacking you that day. Yeah. Um, and you just, you can't seem to find that joyous spirit. But then that's when I, I was even sharing earlier with the youth that you can't rely so much on that hype of emotion mm -hmm. because then that's where the discipline comes in. Right. Because if we live so much on this high of emotion, oh my God, the spiritual, the spiritual, the spiritual, we're going to, we're going to be disappointed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Above all, as far as uh, spiritual attacks, I say. Not even being a musician, not even being a leader, just being a worshiper in general mm -hmm. does put that target on your back mm -hmm. because you're bringing God glory, mm -hmm. you know, to the one who deserves all the glory, to the one who deserves all the praise. Mm -hmm. um, you will have all these, you know, small little attacks where people get upset or oh, or, yeah. or hmm. you also get those times too where you feel sometimes a little disappointment to when you're worshiping you're worshiping and you're feeling something and you look back at the congregation and everyone's all stiff like what just happened mm -hmm. where you just question of like god is doing something so beautiful and it's like if people just rejected it mm -hmm. yeah. but this is where you find the beauty in all of this though because although that maybe they're stiff you're still planting that seed in them yeah and as you keep on worshiping and this, this is something that i always wanted to kind of dig deeper into what uh, some uh, worship leaders call throne room like worship where there's like worship where you're just thanking God, but then there's also like throne room worship where there's like an outpouring like of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit mm -hmm. in your congregation. And you know, like as as I attested earlier, it, it's always key to stay in prayer, but more than anything, fasting as well. Mm -hmm. That is something that um, I haven't done as much recently, but I I have done it in the past where I do take like the, these fasts and I really do see God's hand yeah. moving that because mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you are, you know, offering your, your body as a living sacrifice, God is going to honor that. And God is really going to, you know, re release that atmosphere of, mm -hmm. you know, the, the heart of worship. So yeah. uh, mm -hmm. above all, it's just always be prepared. Yeah. No matter what, you got to be like King David where he just, <laughs> you know, he just stood up and he's like, okay, you know, I might just do some rocks and let's go to battle. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Um, um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say um, just like as far as like lies from the enemy. Yeah. Um, watching other worship teams too sometimes. Oh yes. Mm. It's very discouraging. Yes. Mm. Like you, you I, well, we, I know you're like me. We. You start to envy like the sound equipment mm -hmm. that they have or the effects or like, wow, they had so much money to like 
yeah. make that sound amazing. But if you're doing what he's saying and you're spending time in worship and prayer, like none of that matters. Yes, it will always sound beautiful. Yeah. I've been in places where, I, and this is so funny that you mentioned this because when I was beginning, you know, the ministry walk, you know, the church that I, you know, found God, it was very simple. It was just an acoustic guitar and drums, mm. no pads, no <laughs> click tracks. I know musicians that are watching <laughs> multi tracks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Believe me, we, we've also been in that wave where like, well, let's introduce it. Let's introduce it. And for some reason, it just doesn't happen. And I'm like, OK, maybe it's God's plan. But I've also been in, you know, I've witnessed and experienced, you know, churches that have like 14, 16 musicians on stage and it sounds so pretty. But then I've also been in places where it's just one person with an acoustic guitar yeah. and worshiping. And I kid you not, sometimes it takes just that one person with that acoustic guitar that I feel God's presence the strongest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say any of that other stuff is wrong. I yeah. mean, that's great yeah, that absolutely. God has provided and he can do that. But. I piggyback on that, especially coming from a really small church from Nueva Creación. And um, I know personally for me, like I, when I see those teams on, on YouTube and I'm like, I especially oh, when I see Spanish worship and they're going crazy yeah. and they're all hype. I'm like, I want that. Yeah. I want to be able to experience that. And that can even lead to envy and yeah. uh, make you realize, well, I don't want to do this anymore because it's not here or, but that's just lies from the enemy yeah. that happened. Yeah. Above all, it's always to just stay encouraged. And if you are reading your word and you are spending time with God, God will manifest through your worship. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of even the most broken of instruments if you use even we don't even need instruments to worship god i feel like we forget yeah. that sometimes Amen. we can worship with our voice we can worship in, in different types of way too like i know for for quite a while i was getting into just writing kind of like poetic mm -hmm. like notes to god as a mm -hmm. form of worship as well mm -hmm. so you know sometimes i feel like we get so caught up in the oh with the instruments instruments multi tricks and that's beautiful but also remember that there are a lot of ways to worship God and bring glory to him. Yeah. Amen. Let's walk down that path a little bit about, you know, resources, performance versus worship. Um, a worship leader is a very unique role uh, because we want you to be good at what you do. We want you to be a good singer and a good musician. Um, but people also need to follow you in worship. So can you share with me just a little bit about that balance of like, you know, technical skill versus worship? <laughs> Again, there's people who want to worship and there are people who are called to worship. Okay. So I'm a firm believer in that. Um, I've had to, there have been people, I mean, even on our team, we have some people who are called to worship and we do have some people who want to worship because they bring this beautiful stage presence and it might not necessarily be their biggest gifting in life, but they add so much to the team because of that, yeah. because they're just up there worshiping with their hearts. But I, I do think it's like a fine balance of both because as a congregation, like we have so many different strengths and weaknesses and I want to be able to nurture all of that for everybody yeah. and let God do his thing but i mean you don't you also don't want to be distracting right um so and the bible even says like play skillfully so i mean yeah you do have to put effort into it and you do need to be prepared mm -hmm. when you yeah. come to worship can you break down called to worship versus want to worship so <laughs> those lights look cool i want to jump around the stage but i don't pray um but it just looks fun. I just want to be a part of something fun. Gotcha. I want to worship. Want to worship. Desire. Whereas someone who's called to worship is willing to put in the work, put in the prayer, put in reading the word, mm -hmm. laying down. Like how I said, I had to lay down my guitar yeah. to make sure my heart was aligned with Christ. Like yeah. that has to be more to be important devoted. to me yeah. than mm -hmm. getting up on a stage and singing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. I, yeah. I agree. You know, I think there are definitely people there that, um, are amazing musicians, but they don't know how to worship. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's yes. a, a, a right way to distinguish it where it's like, oh, I want to be a part of that. I want to, um, you know, praise God on stage. Um, and that's very different than being called to mm -hmm. worship and serving yeah. in worship. I think yes. people look to the stage and they see these awesome singers and musicians mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, I'm a great guitarist. I should be up there showing off my skills. Um, mm -hmm. But that's very different than, mm -hmm. than leading in worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think there's um, 
there was a video on YouTube. I forgot the name of it, but it was a worship leader that was like plain simple versus plain so complex. But it's so funny because this is actually a very controversial topic within the worship community now. Because mm -hmm. as I looked at the scrolling through the comments, like people were like, well, I felt God's presence through that basis, like <laughs> slap bass and all of that. But then there's the other side where it's like, why do you need to do that to worship God? Yeah. Where you mm -hmm. could just play simple and it could be like a, a peaceful thing. And I know sometimes uh, me and Gabby talk about that sometimes it's like, how do we come to like the middle where like we could play freely, but also controlled? Mm -hmm. So not so much volume, but for the musicians that are watching for a more like dynamic like sense. Like for me that I'm a drummer, what is doing too much and what is not doing too much? Mm -hmm. How do I play simple and how does it not look like I'm showing off? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if I'm worshiping God through my drums, because I can't sing for anything. So <laughs> the way my expression of worship is like, I'm going I'm to hit all the drums that I can <laughs> because that's 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 me worshiping God. Yeah. That, that's that's Absolutely. my language. Yeah. But there's also, a, and, and I'll be honest myself, humbly too, there's some moments where it's like, oh, I would like I just need to do this specific drum fill or it kills a song and no it, it should not be like that yeah there is no specific fill that's gonna bring more anointing <laughs> towards your worship yeah. I promise yeah there is no specific guitar solo that you need to do to feel God's presence more yeah. as long as your heart is aligned with not only being humble yeah. but also being aligned with you know the movement of God because yeah. sometimes we want to move our own pace but you know, when we move with, you know, God's pace and what God has planned, you know, for our congregation, for ourselves. And I believe everything does come together and, and you find that 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 sweet spot. Yeah. And it's really difficult to find that sweet spot. <laughs> if I'm be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I you had asked, how is it for a worship leader to follow or um, how can you gain like gain the confidence of your congregation? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it was a little harder at first mm -hmm. when I started. I mean, I was 19. Um, I wasn't fluent in Spanish. And yeah. um, I was leading a full Spanish congregation. Yeah. And um, so at being younger, I was listening to a lot of more of the contemporary Christian music. And going back to my church, I'm like, I know that that music or that mm -hmm. form of worship was not going to be edifying for them. Mm -hmm. So that's when he came up or when we were just, when he said mashups, it's like we kind of became a like king of mashups because yeah. <laughs> it's like i'm like okay how am i gonna allow these people to one start to grow and learn into this new contemporary worship yeah. but also know where uh, where it can hit them at home what yeah. worship can hit them where they feel that they can worship and um be in the in the holy spirit so what i would do for a while was i would get a really old song that I knew that they would love and I would tag it with like a new contemporary yeah. worship song and a little bit three years later now I can pull out a song and they're ready yes. to worship to Amen. whatever Amen. Amen. um but as far as the um you would ask before the the what you had you asked about the following how do you uh uh, as a leader, I mean, you, it's great to be uh, an amazing singer, but if you had an opera performer up there, oh. no one could sing like they do. Yeah. So when it comes with that, you can have the voice. Yes. This is where kind of, when you're, when you're saying you can be called to worship, um, you can have a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. Anyone can have a beautiful voice. I really do believe that. But if you don't carry the authority that God has given you, because one thing that I've always been told, it's like, yes, you have you have a beautiful voice, but it's that part when you minister where the spirit flows. Yes. So yeah. I feel if you don't carry that boldness and know that you are crowned in confidence, worship is going to be just be a pretty song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. It's that time of ministering yes. where people are really going to be connected. OK, I, I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I feel what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So that difference okay i'm in call to worship can you carry that boldness that god yeah. has given you yeah. can you yourself say i am crowned with authority that yeah. i'm going to proclaim what god is speaking to me yeah. in order to touch your guys's hearts amen so that's what i'm thinking call to worship is and yeah yeah so <laughs> and even speaking at least for myself as far as song selection i sure. feel that there are some songs that are based for a more like a concert slash yeah. performance mm -hmm. setting slash like yeah. a worship night and there are some songs that are just congregational. You have to be um, like you really do have to pray about it and really see, you know, yeah. the direction that your congregation is heading to. Yeah. 
you know, you don't want to introduce this like super like heavy metal song in a you know older Hispanic church. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> We've had that. Oh, yeah. Like, did, did the enemy just like you know like take control of you or what? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, to that regard, and and I know some worship leaders uh, try to listen more to the radio to see what's you know what's what's popping, you know, what's popular. Mm-hmm. But in reality, some of those songs are you know should be specifically for concert base because sure. we need to uh, as you know as worship leaders and directors and just worshipers in general um it's important to really look at the lyrics because yes, for yeah. us musicians yeah, we're just like bumping our heads like oh yeah that's yeah. cool that's a <laughs> sick you know uh, a drum solo or that drum fill or you know that that's a sick solo like we need to we need to add that mm-hmm. but you know if we're, we're we're bringing this that should be more like in a concert setting you know how is it edifying our church yeah. we need to you know put ourselves kind of like in that spot where how is this song going to glorify God right now in a yeah. congregation? And I know there's been different methods of how people introduce, you know, songs to uh, their congregation. I know for us for a while, it was, if we're introducing one new song, have it every Sunday. So, because more than likely what's going to happen if the people hear it for the first time, they're going to pay attention to the words. And as you're, you know, you keep on playing it, then they'll begin to connect more in, in worship. So... Well, they say by the time the worship team is sick of the song, the that's church has finally learned the song. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. accurate. Yeah, I think that's really important to be testing those lyrics, even the theology of your songs. It's like, is this accurate to what mm-hmm. we want our people to know and understand? Uh, because those words become prayers at yeah. time yes. as you're worshiping. Uh, from a personal perspective, when I was like six years old in VBS, I like accepted christ through a song like Mm -hmm. i was singing jesus you are my all in all Mm -hmm. and i like made that my prayer Mm -hmm. and i think that's very true even today Mm -hmm. like we don't know how our those in in our congregation are going to be reacting to these Mm -hmm. songs or Mm -hmm. embracing what those songs are saying Mm -hmm. um I've had the horror stories of people wanting to sing special music at, at church. And mm-hmm. um, it's like, whoa, this is this is not even biblical. It yeah, sounds yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, yeah. but um, this is all backwards. It's all yeah. about you trying to yes. get things right. But yes. um, and so you're I think that's absolutely yeah, accurate. And Michael, I think you hit, you know, you know, the head on the on the nail right there with that. Another topic, too, that is so great is how do you determine which worship is more talking about failures and the other yeah. that's biblically correct and praising God. Amen. You know, I think that's one of the, the bigger topics today now that, you know, we talk about because when we think of worship, like, yes, when we, we when we talk to God, we, we express our failures and we're honest. But what about the actual worshiping? Because what if in our whole cell is we just talk about failure yeah. and it's like, where is the joy of the Lord in the worship? Because when David was, you know, worshiping, there was joy in there. Yeah. You know, um, when, you know, kings would get anointed, there was joy. There was worship. Worship at that time was considered such a joyful thing. Yeah. You know, so. That's something we try at the Oaks. Like on a Sunday morning, it's important to me that worship is pointed upward. Yeah. Because we're coming together as a body. We're all going through a thousand things. Um, So to put the focus back on Jesus and just really rejoice as a family and praise him as a family, I feel is more, and this is just, just me and just, um, how God has like groomed me for this position. But I just feel like it's more fulfilling as they leave the church that Sunday, because you don't want them leaving, thinking Mm -hmm. about the failures that they had and that slow as me as they go. And it's important when we gather, we're going to be worshiping in heaven for eternity. Yeah. So if we can't worship as a church family (laughs) once a week, Mm -hmm. You're not going to enjoy heaven so much. I don't think so. I don't know. We're worshiping constantly. Yeah. So like if we're going to do like a song that's kind of focused, like on a Sunday morning, I try to stay away from songs that say like, um, you know, like I, 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 I. Yeah. or if we do do something like that, I'll change the words to like we or are, or like mm-hmm. to make it more as a family unit, yeah. like we're together in this type of thing. Better together. <laughs> Okay, let's talk a little bit about some practical things. Um, So let's imagine that um, a worship leader or senior pastor is listening to this podcast. What do you look for in a participant on your team? Hmm. Well, one that is willing to be uh, devoted and disciplined. Mm -hmm. Someone that is willing to, you know, accept correction, I think more than anything. But also as a leader, also have that open door policy where, 
it, you know, it goes both ways, yeah. you know, where you can be honest about me and I can be honest about you. Um, also see that they're willing to come to prayer. I think more than anything for, for us, at least at Nueva, we always, always, always to our team, come to prayer, come to prayer, come to prayer. It is so essential, Yeah, we you know, to, to come under one spirit, you know, unanimous, you need that prayer connection. Oh. Yeah. Like individually huge but also where your team i know um sometimes it's so easy for us you know to pray for ourselves but can you pray together as a team you know and 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 come you know under god and just tell god hey we we come under the same spirit together yeah. and we want to just connect god and just allow your spirit to just move through us and to me that is really essential um we don't really try to look like for like specific like skills because I have the personal belief that anyone can become a master of their craft Amen. if they put in the work. Yeah. And even if, you know, they, they don't become a master of their craft, you know, there's going to be some way that God is still going to glorify yeah. through them. So you're, the, you're on the sweeter side of, of yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a harsher when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to worship. Not not so much, but I just Worship is not a game for me. Yeah. If you want to come, you're coming with your full heart. If you want to if you want to be on the team, I need you dedicated. Yeah. It's like I am the type of worship leader where I'm not going to hold back a song just because you weren't prepared and yeah. you you didn't come. Well, I just I listened to it, but I don't know. It doesn't cut out for me. Yeah. If I'm going to throw a song and I really think um it's going to be edifying to the congregation. I want my whole team to be on one page. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can ask my team if if someone, we have this one rule where it's like if someone shows up five minutes late, it's like two push-ups for like each, <laughs> each minute. Yeah. And so um, I can't do really push-ups, but I do, people. yeah. Are you yeah. used to? They're all on time yeah, now. Yeah, so now, now they're, all, they're all on time. And so, but because, yes, was it hard at first? Did people not want to be on the worship team because yes. it was oh it's too much uh you you take it to the other level worship i can just come and play and it, it'll be fine no yeah i'm like it is something special that i'm going yeah. to bring every single sunday yeah. so it's like you're either in or you're not if you're going to be half one foot in one foot out please get out yeah it's like i so but i do believe that's what got us here yeah. in just those two years of yeah. me pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And I'm, I, I look at my team and I'm just like, see, hard work does pay off. Yeah. And I yes. know the Lord, the Lord's spirit moving through you guys is getting us to where we are now. Yeah. And that's just, it's a testimony for me. It's, it's just an awesome feeling. So yeah, I'm on a little harsher side, but we work <laughs> together. We balance it out. So we balance it out. Yes, absolutely. I'm in between them. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, it's just, a, it's a mixture of both. So a couple of years ago, you know, during COVID, we don't mention that, but when churches were shutting down and people were leaving, um, we lost a lot of people. And at first it really was hard for me because I felt like we lost a lot of skilled people. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But God answers prayers because before that happened, I prayed, God, I really want some people who would just have the heart of a worshiper. <laughs> I don't need skill right now. I need like yeah. some worship. Yeah. And God honored that. Yeah, God we got said, a lot yeah. of worshipers. <laughs> and That's I was like, good. okay, Lord, now we need a little bit more skilled. So <laughs> I'm, I'm in the middle of that because worship for me, yes, it's Sunday morning. It's huge. But it's also like throughout the week too. And so for me, yes. yeah. community is huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so like I said earlier, the time that we get to spend with the worship team members, I'm not looking for someone who's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just as he said, you know, you can develop your skill. You can get there if you put the time and the effort into it. But I'm just looking for people who are practical, who want to worship, who are willing to put in the time mm -hmm. um, and that just want, want to work together, I feel yeah. like. Uh, okay, so now from the perspective of I'm a I'm a senior pastor and I don't have a worship leader yet. Oh, there goes another light. Uh, if you're watching on video, both of our lights just died because they were on battery. But um, Energizer, gonna... please sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if I'm a senior pastor and I'm looking to put someone in charge mm -hmm. of my worship, what kind of person should I be looking for? Like, I mean, I can put out a resume on indeed or whatever yeah. but um who when i'm interviewing them what do i need to consider about uh, a worship leader to give them this incredibly sacred role um in my church 
if I wasn't like say if I was interviewing this person for I would really ask them what is their what is their life outside of the church what what are their what is their discipline mm -hmm. um, within their Christian walk because like I said you can have a, a hip cool looking person um, who can has a great voice and can sing and be like okay cool you have you you fit the part you can sing the part awesome but you're not going to be able to really be led by the spirit. Um, and I think that's the biggest like main point is that you really need to, as a worship leader or as a worship pastor, you really yeah. need to be led by the spirit yeah. and your own daily life. And that portrays on a Sunday morning. I think it's important that you pray for someone who is willing to adapt, not necessarily adapt to like the senior pastor style, but someone who's willing to adapt to what God wants to do in that mm -hmm. congregation. Um, I We had a speaker come to our church one time with just our staff, and he was talking about how in order to raise up new leaders, it's okay for quality to suffer. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Not everyone's Amen. just going to walk in and know what they're doing. And so you have to be okay with letting go of the quality to really mentor someone to teach them, to show them the ropes, to be graceful to them. Um, so I would say, you know, look for someone who has the heart of wanting to learn, mm -hmm. someone who has the heart and the passion for wanting to do what God's called them to do. Mm -hmm. Even if they think they're coming on as a worship leader and you say, hey, you know what? I really feel like you'd be great in our children's department. Like, I, I didn't even call you in here for that, but would you be willing to do that? Yeah. I mean, if they're willing to do what God wants them to do, I mean, there's really no stopping where mm -hmm. God's going to yeah. take them. Amen. Ultimately, um, I'm going to put in a different perspective. <laughs> Say if I was a senior pastor and yeah. hiring someone. So the first thing that I would want to consider is, could I consider this person as my second hand? Sure. As my mm -hmm. right hand person? Yeah. Because as a worship leader, you have to be connected so much to your pastor. I mean, for Gabby, it's you know, a little easier who does a pastor. <laughs> but per se, for me, you know, if I was a pastor, I would want someone that I could put trust into. Yeah. And I always have this firm belief that if you are a worship leader, you should also be able to teach. Yeah. yeah. Because if you're not able to teach, that means you're not reading. That means you're not putting your time in prayer and in worship. You know, otherwise, how is, you know, the presence of God going to flow if you're not doing that? The other thing that I would want to, you know, obviously see is someone being able to be mentored or yeah. anything. Because, you know, if you're a senior pastor, um, you also kind of have to think like longevity as well. Um if you're a senior pastor and you see kind of like you're getting kind of closer to your retirement, you also got to consider maybe this worship yeah. leader might be the one who has to step up. And there's been plenty of churches that I've seen where the worship leader does, you know, step up to that, that senior case, level like, pastor. Or in that case um, of that um, person that you're interviewing or the worship pastor is going to come on, can they can they be a mentor for someone else? Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Do they have that mentor spirit? Yeah, my father would always look for people who are faithful, accountable, and teachable. Mm -hmm. We call them fat people, which is very nice, <laughs> but uh, it's a nice acronym to remember, faithful, yeah. accountable, and teachable. Yes. Yeah. And one thing to always remember is to not get caught up with the trend of image. Yeah. I think the church now and the worship community is suffering from that Amen. because everyone wants to copy each other, and it has to be this very presentable perfect light up where people want the specific amount of lights they yeah. want the worship leader to be like super fit or you know have like the best of voices it, yeah. it, it shouldn't be that way yeah it shouldn't be that way if we're thinking longevity and and realizing that trends go like that you yeah. know they leave so it's important to know that you're gonna have someone that will be faithful yeah. to this role and if they're from your church and they're applying to your worship leader, you know, if you've seen them throughout the years, if you are the pastor, you will see the kind of worship that they bring. Yeah. You will see if they're the person that are just like this or if they're like bumping their heads, you know, they're clapping, they're worshiping. You'll see all of that. Yeah. Um, to that regard, for others that maybe are applying that are maybe outside your church, you know, more than anything, talk to them maybe about their testimony. I think testimony is what, you know, it, it will let you into someone's life yeah. so much because you will see what brought them to God. And I think that's so important. Yeah. Testimony plays a big role yeah, in these resumes for sure. Yeah.
And I think it's, a, again, the, the worship leader role is a very unique role because you do also have to develop that relationship with the congregation, even as you were sharing, Gabby. Mm -hmm. It took like almost two years to really have that yeah. trust mm -hmm. um, to be able to lead. And that's true of any place in ministry. It takes time uh, to gain trust to lead. But uh, you want someone who's willing to do the work, mm -hmm. um, to be trusted to lead, and uh, that you will trust them to yeah. lead. Um, yeah. You can't micromanage them. Um, so... Uh, the, I just want to say here, it hadn't come up, but like, there's no, I hope that our churches, um, have worship in all ages and levels and spaces of ministry. Um, I'm, I was so proud of Northgate that we had worship in our kids town. We had worship in our youth group. Mm -hmm. We had worship mm -hmm. for our adults, mm -hmm. um, worship everywhere. And they're never too young. And so, um, I'd encourage you if you don't have worship in those places to find ways to bring it in. We did YouTube videos uh, yeah. in, in youth group for a long time just to sing to them mm -hmm. and um it, it sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't work mm -hmm. um but we tried and we we started to teach and grow and you're only going to become a better worshiper when you mm -hmm. invite the opportunity to worship yeah. mm -hmm. um i want to wrap up here we're just over an hour on my on my count but is there anything else that we didn't miss that you're like i really want people to know about this or that or whatever in, in regards to worship um one thing i just want to end off with is that sometimes people believe that you're only a worshiper if you're on that altar, mm. but that's not necessarily true. Mm, the amen. person next to the person next to you, or you even you, if your heart is completely humbled and surrendered, yes. you are the best of worshiper that amen. there could be. Amen. Yes. Pray for your worship teams. Yes. Oh, actually, that was my one question. How can people help you? If, if we have people listening, what's the best way they can help you? I mean, sometimes they're like, hey, I told Jimmy that he could be on the band. But you're like, yeah, no, we already said no to Jimmy. So. I, say, I say the best way that you can um, pray for a worship team or be of, of a help to a worship team is, one, pray for pray for their strength. Pray yeah. the, um, that we can be strong in spiritual warfare because... That's one of the biggest things I know that a lot of worship teams or worship leaders go through. But um, as far as of help, you, the congregation, being able to sing back like a song to you or yeah. show that they're engaged is the most encouraging thing ever. Yeah. Even for me, when I see these kids jumping or I see the congregation worshiping, it is the joy in my heart to be able to see that I was able to lead through the Holy Spirit um, for them to feel that that presence. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. Uh, just to piggyback spiritual warfare, pray for your worship team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in most cases, everyone's volunteer. Yeah. Um, you might, I mean, the worship leader, like in my position, this is my career. I work for the church. I'm blessed to be able to minister and I get paid for that. Um, but I wasn't always that way. So just pray for your team because we're all dealing with so much during the week and this is volunteer. Like we come together because we feel this calling. Mm -hmm. And so just pray for protection over Amen. the team, pray for, mm -hmm. um, spiritual warfare, pray for the enemy to be kicked out and for God to break down walls. So, because the stronger we are, in Christ, the more our worship is going to be amplified or yeah. amplified for him. Amen. Yeah. I piggyback, piggyback that really quick. Piggyback on the piggyback. Yeah. Piggyback yeah. on the piggyback. <laughs> Double piggyback. Um, the pray for, um, for God to always manifest and show his ways. Cause yeah. I know for the both of us, I mean, being full time and full time, um, works and student and ministry, um, we're, I feel like it's a, a juggle all the time. Um, and I know as we further enter our career, I pray that, you know, I always keep worship and God first. And um, yeah, so that's a big Can prayer. Can I share like a beautiful testimony Absolutely. about our churches? Yeah. So Nueva is actually a daughter church of the Oaks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, once you guys break off like 15 years 15 ago? 15 years ago, I think. It was a long yeah. time. It's been a decade um, and a half. <laughs> and it's kind of like the children leave and they, they go on their way and they want to yeah. do things their own way. And um, God has blessed them tremendously. <laughs> but one of my biggest prayer request just even from right out of college was that we would connect again one day like we're yeah. in bakersfield and we never got together and it yeah. wasn't for any particular reason just busyness and yeah. they're on this side of town doing something we're on this side of town yes. doing something and so it's beautiful to me to see that that wasn't even my generation that like broke off i'm in the next one with these guys i'm at the top of the generation like yeah. we're, yeah. we're millennials yeah. 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 Millennial? i think so i don't know, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, we're together right <laughs> 
But um, God has, we were seeing that this morning for a foundation, like he's faithful through generations. Like this was mm. a prayer request of mine yes. that God would connect us yeah. as a worship, not even worship team, but like churches. Yeah. Mm. And this last year, like we got together for worship nights at our facility and their facility. Yeah. Um, we're coming to camp together now. Yeah. Like we're supporting each other in a whole new way. And it's a, it's the next generation yeah. that's like Amen. picking it up yes. from where it left off. Amen. And so it's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yes. I, I hope more of our churches uh, continue to find ways to collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, we want to see the South Pacific Alliance be a family again and mm -hmm. work together. And you guys are a shining example of mm -hmm. cooperation. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've, I've gotten to come visit you guys a couple mm -hmm. of times. It's been mm -hmm. fantastic um, to see you come together to worship and to celebrate and um, have fun together. Yeah. And so um, definitely big encouragement to uh, all of our churches to, to do that too. Mm. Um, well, as we wrap up here, I uh, just want to say thank you so much. And thank um, you for us. yes, yeah. absolutely. If you, this is always, as always, I want this to be the start of a conversation. And so if you have people who need to hear this podcast, share it with them, pass it along, send mm -hmm. them a link. Um, if you want to have more questions, if you have more comments, feel free to email me, Michael at cmaspa.org. Um, and if you need to find them, I'll get you in touch with them. But um, it's, it's, this is, this is the Alliance family and we're working together mm -hmm. to yes. uh, celebrate and to become better as ministers and worshipers. Mm -hmm. um, and we only do that through each other. Iron sharpens mm -hmm. iron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so again, uh, so thank you to you guys for being here with me. Thank you to our churches who make this possible. Um, and I love you all. And until next time, all love of Jesus for all Bye. the world.